Elizabeth Colbert Bush has been defeated by Mark Sanford. He won by nine percentage points in the special election of the first district of South Carolina. The tally was 77,251 votes to 64,413 votes. Now, it's a little bit surprising because uh, Elizabeth Colbert Bush, according to some polls, was up about nine percentage points going into this election. Obviously, whatever polls those were, were incorrect. Now, this was an election to fill Tim Scott's seat, who stepped in as senator for Jim DeMint when he left to head the Heritage Foundation. So, am I surprised about this, that Colbert Bush lost? Yes and no. No, because it's a deeply conservative voting district. It went to Mitt Romney over Barack Obama by 18 points. And yes, I am surprised because how much time do you got? Because I could go on forever about this. Okay, first of all, he was outspent four to one, Mark Sanford. Now, you might not think that means much, but 93% of the time, the person who makes the most money ends up winning the election, the person who raises the most money. So Colbert Bush outspent him, he still won. He also didn't have the backing of the National Republican Party. That's supposed to hurt a lot in an election, but it did not for Mark Sanford. And he is the world's sleaziest and most hypocritical politician. First of all, he ran on a platform of fiscal responsibility and family values. Now, I'm going all the way back because he, he used to represent the same district in the same House seat. Then he became the governor. Then he had to step down from being governor. And now he reran and he's back as a representative. So why did he step down? Well, if you guys remember Mark Sanford, there was the big scandal, the big sex scandal. Okay, he disappeared from being governor for a week. You know where he went? To Argentina to bang his mistress. He didn't tell anybody where he was going. His staff didn't know. None of his friends knew. His family didn't know. And did you know when he went away, one of the, one of the days that he was away was Father's Day? He's got four kids. They were like, where's dad? And when they finally got in contact with him, his excuse was, no, it's cool, it's cool. I'm, uh, I'm hiking the Appalachian Trail. Turns out it was absolute bullshit. He was banging his Argentine mistress. And then get this. So not only was he banging his Argentine mistress, he also used taxpayer money to take the plane to over there. He also used the taxpayer used taxpayer money to use the plane when he went to his son's soccer game, when he went to get his hair cut, when he went to the dentist. Now remember, this is the guy who ran on fiscal responsibility and family values. I mean, just based on that alone, I have no idea how anybody could have voted for him. Now, look, I'm not saying that I even care about the extramarital affair, because in all seriousness, it, particularly when it's a Democrat, if they're right on all the policy issues and they're just a douchebag in their own personal life, I, don't, I think those are two separate things. You can be the biggest asshole in the world in your, in your private life, but you could be awesome at your job. And I don't think that's even that hard of a concept to grasp, but a lot of people have trouble grasping that, right? But when it comes to Mark Sanford, it's the hypocrisy is the problem. Because he ran as I am fiscally responsible, and then he spent the taxpayer money in a billion different ways on himself and to bone his mistress, right? And uh, family values, you're the last person who could talk about family values. And then, look, man, he, all he had to do to get elected was go out there and say, yeah, oh, God, you know what it is? Jesus. Jesus saved me! God, Jesus saved me. He was looking down upon me. He said, Mark, I need you to run again. Now, uh, a lot of people in uh, South Carolina, I'm guessing when they voted for him, their thought process was, oh, well, he repented a lot, and he obviously uh, feels bad, and he's not going to do it again, so, uh, yeah, let's vote for him. Now, the ironic thing is the exact opposite lesson will be learned. He'll walk away thinking, I'm fucking invincible. I can do whatever I want. There's no consequences associated with it. And to make it worse, did you know he has since broken up with his wife? They're done. 
And at all of his uh, events, whether it be press conferences or when he won, you know who's in the background? His mistress. Family values, just like Jesus would want, man.